Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally reviewing and demonstrating the two new Chanel Fall Winter Blushes. This is Dussor de Equinox. I purchased both 798 Beige Rosé A Mauve and 797 Beige A Coral. As you can see, I already have my base and concealer done. I wanted to skip straight to these blush reviews. I'm also going to finish my eyes and lips on camera because I have a few other new products to share with you. And since I usually skip ahead during brows, today I'm going to walk you through step by step and show you the entire brow transformation. Now if you watched my previous video where we discussed this collection, you kind of already know where my head is regarding the shades, but I still appreciate the details. I mean, these are beautiful compacts. Again, it's Chanel luxury makeup. How bad can it be? I'm not saying I hate them. I'm not saying they're terrible blushes. They're beautiful to look at, but just because something is new, just because something's beautiful, doesn't mean we have to buy everything. I still want us to be mindful consumers, myself included. This is 798 Beige Rosé A Mauve. I think this is the most popular one from what I've seen, what I can tell from your comments. So when you open it up, it does come with the velvet protector, half moon brush, and then the powder protector. And you can see the beautiful giant CC. Anytime you see this kind of branding from Chanel, it's going to be a star product. You have beige rosé in the center, mauve on the exterior, and the autumnal print that's on the exterior packaging is embossed directly on the powder. If these are your colors, the shades that typically speak to you, you get a lot of use out of them, then this collection is really a no-brainer. It's very fall forward, very warm and cozy vibes. I think for people with the right skin tone, this is going to be really flattering. Here is 797 Beige A Coral. You can see beige in the center and then the coral on the exterior. This swatches a little bit more like a bronzer on me, so I'm kind of curious about this terracotta color. I'm gonna go in with the mauve first on this side, this kind of berry mauve, mauve, and we'll see what happens. I don't have any bronzer on, just concealer and powder and foundation. Okay, what happened? And on everybody I've seen this on, it looks pretty nice. Hmm, but I don't really like that. Okay, let me keep blending. I probably need to balance out with the eyes, the lips, and the bronzer. I was completely expecting to be wrong <laughs> and, and really love this, but I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Are you that shocked that you were right? It's just not the most flattering shade on my skin tone, my personal preferences. I can't say what this is gonna look like on you. I have no idea what you look like. I wish I did, I wish I knew all of you personally, but I don't. I don't know what your collection looks like. I don't know your personal preferences or your skin tone, so, I have no clue what this is going to look like on you. On me, it's just not my favorite. I think once I finish the makeup, it won't look so bad right now. And I am going blind, but when I look in the viewfinder, it looks a little bit bruisish, which I was afraid of. I'm gonna continue to diffuse it out. And once everything is balanced, it probably won't be so harsh on the cheek. But yeah, with just blush, I'm not gonna judge it too harshly yet. Like I said, I think I can make both of these work, but that's not really enjoyable, is it? I want to feel excited and inspired by every new makeup purchase I get. I want to feel like this is something that could immediately go to the top drawer and be a favorite. It'd be something that I use six months from now when nobody else is talking about it. I still really love it because it makes me feel beautiful and confident and I have so many blushes that I really love and other shades that I just prefer. I don't think this is going to be the type of shade that I continue to use. Yeah, I don't love that. Uh, what happened? I, I don't know what happened. This is a really fluffy brush. So I kind of thought it would be perfect because it would blend it really lightly and it wouldn't pick up too much product really trying to set myself up for success here. I want the makeup to look really good, but I don't like that at all. Maybe I didn't have enough powder on. I'm not sure, but this is the berry alone. 
it's not terrible, it's not hideous. But do I have probably 20 other blushes that I prefer? Yes. Next, we're going in with 797 Beige A Coral on the other cheek and we'll see what happens. It took me such a long time to build up the swatch on my arm when I was playing around with these yesterday. I honestly thought they were going to be so light. They might actually be way more pigmented than I thought. Let's see. Trying to start light and then slowly build. That's always the safest bet. I need to keep blending, but of the two, initially, I think I prefer this one, the coral, which isn't so surprising because I generally like a peachy blush. I have a ton of them in my collection that I regularly use. It's not that I think coral peachy blushes aren't good or a terracotta blush wouldn't be pretty. I have so many already that I really love and I'm trying my best to not duplicate too many times in my collection. But once I blend this out, I think this will be really pretty. Now this is really nice. This reminds me of a lot of blushes that I use regularly. Well, that's great news because that means this is something that I will continue to get use out of. Okay, what do we think? Beige, mauve, just blush, no bronzer. Which is your favorite? Do you like them both? Do you hate them both? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I promise I will not be offended. You know, I was thinking after reading a lot of your comments on my last video regarding this collection, am I being too picky? Am I being too harsh and, you know, judging too soon? Is there something Chanel could have done that would have really excited me? Not a lot excites me anymore and maybe that's really unfair and I'm coming from an unfair perspective when I'm judging brands now. I remembered last year's collection where they came out with all of the nudes and it was kind of an ombre nude collection. We had 10 lipsticks, 10 nail polishes, and for most other brands, a collection of nudes would be incredibly basic and boring, but because Chanel had notoriously been terrible about nudes, all of their nudes are very pink, and there's maybe a sprinkling, and then everything else would be pinks and reds. It was kind of refreshing and nice to have browns and true nudes, and it was almost like they created a range so that there was something for every skin tone, which was really nice. What if Chanel did the same thing but for berries, and instead of just doing one berry blush, they gave us a range and we almost had a berry for every single skin tone. I think that would have been really exciting and I would have been interested and intrigued to see another ombre berry collection. I'm not sure if I could see Chanel ever creating a collection like that and when I thought about what that collection would look like, I almost think it would be something maybe Dior would do. Just an idea. I figured I would put it out there in the universe and who knows what will happen. You never know who's listening. I just happened to pull out this Gucci bronzer so I'm going to apply a little bit of this on the forehead, kind of balance out the face a little bit. Once I get my bronzer on, then maybe I'll be able to really see the blushes in a different light. I still need a little highlighter to finish the face. I'm gonna do that at the very end. We're gonna move on to eyes for now, and I'm using one of these Merit Solo Shadows. This is brand new. They sent me the entire collection a couple weeks ago, so I have actually been playing around with this, and I've been using it just about every single day to do my makeup, so I have a lot of thoughts. This is the shade Vachetta. It's kind of the perfect medium intensity brown. My only complaint about this eyeshadow is the packaging is so hard. They're very hard to open. I've been able to open most of the shades, but I swear there is one eyeshadow that I have not seen the color inside because for the life of me, I cannot open it. And it's not just that my hands are slipping or I'm some sort of weakling. I'm sweating. <laughs> there we go. So once you really twist it and you can feel it's getting really tight, then you know, okay, you closed the lid and it's important that you close it properly, otherwise it's gonna dry out because it's a cream shadow. So that's my only issue is just opening and closing it is a little bit tricky. Other than that, I really like it. If anyone watching already has these eyeshadows, can you please let me know if I am going crazy or not? Do you struggle to open the packaging? 
Maybe I just have a really tough bunch. I'm not sure what happened there. You can use your fingers, you can use a brush, you can use basically anything and it blends like a dream. This is a Pro Shadow 14 brush from Sephora. Sometimes I use my fingers, but for the most part, I'll just apply this all over the lid into the crease and then I blend it out with another brush and it's the perfect, very easy, mess-free one and done. See, once I kind of build it up to the crease, here you really can just blend it out with your fingers. It's so simple. It's nice and opaque, but it still feels and looks really thin. And that is very important to me with cream eyeshadows because, you know, now that I'm 36, I have some lines, some texture on the eyelid, and you don't want anything that's going to emphasize that. It starts to look kind of heavy and bulky if the product is too thick. My everyday eye has been two products, the Vachetta Cream Shadow from Merit, and I apply it all over the lid into the crease and blend it out, and then I go in with my Give Beauty Shimmer, and I just pop that right on top. I'm even going to run this beneath the lower lash line as well. There's a really nice double-sided brush, but it's dirty, and because it's a cream product, once it dries down on the brush, it gets a little bit hard, so I need to wash it, but the brush that comes with these, or I think they launched at the same time, is also really good. Now, because I am a glutton for punishment and I spent $40 on this eyeshadow, I'm gonna go back with the Ombre Premier Libra in 402 Sycamore, and I'm gonna see what happens if I apply a little bit of this on the lid, I'm gonna use this instead of the Give Beauty, which I have been using. I'm gonna apply it to the back of my hand. I'm not gonna use the applicator, and then I'm just gonna use my finger. Yeah, no. I thought maybe if there was a base beneath, but it doesn't look like anything. It's okay, it adds a little something. I can see it, but if I lean in close, I mean, is there a big difference here? No. And that's two applications now. I'll go in with a th for a third. Lord knows I wanna find some way to use this. Yeah, no, it's like nothing. I stand by my original opinion. I don't like this. I know some of you really do, which is amazing. If you love this and you love the colors and this is easy for you, perfection. You couldn't ask for anything more. If you have similar shades at home, I think you could probably achieve a similar look with other eyeshadows in the same tone. There are so many incredible new launches coming up soon. Personally, I wouldn't wanna waste my makeup dollars on this when there's something better coming. This is the multi-dimensional eye pigment in the shade Dazzle from Give Beauty. This is my everyday eye I'm showing you right now. Anytime you see little video snippets on Instagram when I'm doing short format video, this is the eye look that I've been wearing. It reflects light in a really beautiful way, but it's not chunky and it's not glitter, just shimmer. So it just brings a little life to the eye. It almost looks wet. I think this is a really underrated product. This right here is such a pretty combination. If you like copper, rose gold, a little shimmer on the eyelid, Vachetta, the solo shadow from Merit, and then a little bit of this Dazzle on top, can't go wrong. And that's it, just two steps. Before I do eyeliner, I'm gonna show you how I fill in my eyebrows. I just unboxed a brand new Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit. This is the only brow pencil I use. And this is the shade four. I believe I've used 3.75 on occasion, but shade four is my go-to. And this is a freshie. First, you just wanna start by brushing up the brows. I'm gonna follow this kind of natural shape that I have going on. So I'm kind of following this angle in and I'm going to start right here. It takes practice, but once you do it a couple times, you start to get the muscle memory and it becomes a little bit faster. 
And it's really important you get those individual hair-like strokes. You don't want this to become completely shaded because then you'll end up with one of those block brows. So if you're gonna take your time, really take your time in the front. I often take little breaks to just kind of stop, move away from the closed mirror and look at the big picture. That definitely helps as well. So now the front is basically filled in. You see, I've kind of followed that angle up. So now I'm at the chunk of the brow. And then I did have microblading down here. It's faded quite a bit, but I'm gonna go over that. And I kind of want to keep the width of the brow the same. It used to be when I was filling in my eyebrows that it would start really thick and then get really thin. We're not doing brows like that. We want to keep, maintain the width until you get back to the soft arch. Every once in a while, I'll stop to blend everything out. So do you see how the width is kind of the same so far? And this is almost a straight line. So this would be my arch and I would normally go in a downward direction. I'm not gonna do that. So instead, I kind of use what I have. So this is my natural brow. That's as low as I'm going to go. And now, see down here, I was filling below the brow. When I get to the second half basically, I'm going to fill above the brow. That way it kind of flattens it out a bit. So at the front, I was filling below. The back, I'm gonna fill above. For the second part of the brow, I'm using the top as a guide because I don't want the arch to be really dramatic. So I kind of flatten it out a bit. And then I connect everything back to the natural brow hairs. That way I'm not going too far out of the lines. You see what a difference. No brow, bold brow. The second step is to set, it really helps with the shape to set all of the hairs in place because then you can really see what it looks like. And I'm just brushing everything up. If you have really long brow hairs, it might look kind of silly brushed up. You can always brush up and then kind of swoop them to the side or just trim the hairs that are really long. See, once you set the hairs in place, you can see if you have any bald patches where you need to go back and fill in a little bit more. That is basically it. If I wanted to be really nitpicky, I could then go back with concealer and clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna do the other brow first and then I may go back and clean it up. Same thing on the other side, I'm starting at the front. I'm still filling below the brow. On this side, I have a hair perfectly placed and I always use that one little hair as a guide. So I take everything basically straight back to that one little hair and then this is where I start to flatten everything out. Eyes are now complete. I hope that brow tutorial was helpful. I did end up refining the tail a little bit with concealer. I went back with eyeliner, did a little bit in the waterline and then liquid on top and mascara. And I highlighted the inner corner of the eye. That was it. Now the last step is lips and then I'll go back at the end and I'll balance out the cheek and I might add a little bit more of each blush so we can really see what they look like. So I want a lipstick that will go with both and I have a new product here. Well, by now it might not really be new. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Lip Blur. Matte Meets Moisture Liquid Lipstick. I recently attended an event in Miami with Charlotte Tilbury and they sent us home with a little goodie bag with several shades.
They had a makeup artist there who was doing touch-ups and this was the shade that she recommended for me. It's Honey Blur. They also had an engraving station, which was really cool. So you got to choose a shade and have it engraved. So this one says Erin Nicole, which I think is really pretty. So Honey Blur is kind of a warm nude. They also have a nude blur. I like this color. It's kind of a fall nude. I'm generally not a matte lipstick fan. In fact, I hate matte lipsticks and I, for that reason, I don't really gravitate towards a lot of liquid lipsticks because most of them are matte. This feels really comfortable. It maintains a little creaminess. Mmm, it smells good too. Almost smells like vanilla. It's really comfortable. And you can wear it blurred out or you can wear it more opaque like traditional lipstick. I didn't want to go in with a lip liner first just in case. What do we think of this color? Is it leaning a little bit too warm? I like it, but I think it might be a little bit too orangey. I don't know. I, it actually looks really pretty, I think, with the terracotta but it's kind of clashing over on this side. This doesn't look that nice together. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna try another shade. Definitely stains the lips. I tried to wipe that off immediately. There's still a little bit of color on my lips, but instead I pulled out Walk of No Shame Blur. Do you guys remember when the name was actually Walk of Shame? Now it's Walk of No Shame. There's no shame in doing the Walk of Shame. I think this is more a traditional fall. Let's see. Ooh, the applicator is really nice. It's very tapered, so you can use it to really line the lips. I believe there is a walk of no shame lip liner though. I like this color and it feels really nice. What do we think of the new lip? I like this makeup. Now I am getting into the fall spirit. I'm trying. I pulled out some fall clothes even though it is 100 degrees and dripping wet outside. It's so gross. But I'm trying. I'm trying to get there mentally. Right now the pop of lip is really what's standing out. With the makeup complete, I don't think either cheek looks bad. This side went on a little bit patchy. It could have been the makeup underneath. I'm not sure. I will keep playing around with it. But when I peeked in the mirror in between face and eyes, I did take a closer look at it and I just don't love the tone on my skin. It does not look that great. Does it look god awful on this face right now with the makeup done? No, I don't think so, but is it the most flattering shade of blush on my skin? It's not. It's too cool toned on my skin. It really does give the same effect as if I have a, a light bruise coming through. So for me, it's just not the most flattering berry shade. I'll use it a, a handful of times and then I probably won't touch it and I'll just look at it because it looks so beautiful. Whereas this side, the coral, I do really like this and I think it's... It's still very fall, but it's not only fall. Like I can still integrate this into my makeup routine right now where I'm still in this strawberry makeup, very summery mood. This still works for me. And it doesn't look overly warm and it doesn't look overly bronze. I was afraid it was gonna look too terracotta on my skin, but it actually does almost look pink. I haven't touched this and it, it's almost looking like a pink blush on me. So I really like that one more than I expected. In fact, of the two, I thought maybe I would prefer the berry and not like this side. I think I prefer the coral versus the berry. I certainly don't want to overdo it and push it, but I am going to apply just a little bit more on each side just so we can really see. And I learned my lesson the first time, so I'm gonna be pretty light-handed. It looks pink. What in the color theory? I'm not sure what's happening, but I like it. 
This actually looks more like a natural flush, which is exactly what I like. I'm going to do a little bit on the nose as well. Yeah, this I will use again. Woohoo! I'm excited. <laughs> I didn't waste all my money. Let's try this again and see what happens. Just a little bit. No, 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 that's gonna go south. If it wasn't so cool toned and muted and it translated to more of a raspberry, I think that would be really pretty. On the right skin tone, this will be really nice. On me, it just doesn't really work, I don't think. That's okay. This is just a blank powder brush with no additional product. I'm just gonna blend everything so it doesn't look terrible. In my next video, we're going to talk about all of the holiday sneak peeks and I have some information on new Chanel launches coming up soon. So if you haven't really been that excited about any of the new makeup, don't worry. There is always something incredible coming around the corner. You never have to feel like you're missing out on something. If you don't love it, skip it and wait because you never know when something really amazing is coming. Overall, I really like the way it turned out. Right now, all I can see is the bold lip, so I may take this off and play around with a few different lip options just so you can see the cheeks and the eyes with several different lipsticks. I think the softer lip goes really nicely with both cheeks. This is my favorite lip so far. But makeup is now finished, and that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.